Hello grade 10s. In this lesson, we look at the electric and magnetic fields that combine to give electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation travels outward from anywhere that electrons are oscillating. So we have to look more closely at what happens when electrons move. If I drop a stone into water, I create a pulse that travels outward through the water. Water particles push and pull on each other. Each particle pulls the one next to it up and the pulse travels outward. But in an electromagnetic wave, there is no medium with particles that move. Electromagnetic waves can travel through empty space. We know that the sun's light reaches us through space. So how does an electromagnetic pulse get generated and how does it propagate, that is, travel to points further ahead? The answer comes in the next lesson. But first, we must understand electric and magnetic fields. So we'll look at an electric field. The balloon, marked Q1, has been rubbed on some wool, and now it has a positive electric charge on it. An electric charge can exert a force on another electric charge. If we bring another positive charge, Q2, near to charge Q1, they repel each other. All the space around the balloon Q1 is an electric field. Any charge that comes into the field will feel an electric force, even though it does not touch Q1. If charge Q1 moves, then the field at some faraway point will change. Of course, the faraway point will not know instantly that the field has changed. It will take some time before it feels the change. So let's say it again. Around an electric charge, there is an electric field, and that field extends to faraway points. If the charge moves, then the field will change at faraway points. Now you must also learn about magnetic fields. Here's a magnet in the shape of a bar. You see how it can attract objects that contain iron. It does not need to touch them. Its field reaches out all around it. The magnet has a north and a south pole, and the north pole of this magnet attracts the south pole of other magnets. Here you see some tiny bar magnets that can spin around on an axis. These tiny magnets also have north and south poles, and they respond to the bar magnet as you see here. They respond even when the bar magnet is quite far away, so we know that the magnetic field extends to faraway points beyond the magnet. In the 1800s, scientists experimented with electricity and they experimented with magnetism. But they thought these were two different phenomena. Then, in 1820, Hans Christian Ørsted in Denmark and Michael Faraday in England, whom you see here, showed that electricity and magnetism were connected. This was a vital discovery and it led to the development of electric generators and motors. Look at the magnetic needle above this copper wire. It lies parallel to the wire and there is no current flowing through the wire. Now if we switch on the circuit, we make electric current flow through the wire. Notice how the magnetic needle responds as though there were a magnet under it. The magnetic needle swings until it is at right angles to the direction of the current. It is very important for you to notice that. The magnetic field works all around the wire as well, not only on top of it. Let's set up a wire that has little magnetic needles all around it. This wire goes down through the board and a wire from the battery is connected to the bottom end. We have made the top of the wire positive and the bottom negative, so the conventional direction of current is downwards from positive to negative. Now I'm going to press the switch. Watch how the needles respond when I pass a current down the wire. The compass needles line up to show the shape and direction of the magnetic field around the wire. What will happen if we reverse the current so that it comes up out of the board? What change will you see in the compasses? Let's see if your prediction was correct. We connect the bottom of the wire to the positive terminal of the battery and the top of the wire to the negative terminal so that current comes upwards. Now I press the switch and look at how the compass needles line up now.
Let's see it here. They line up pointing in an anti-clockwise direction. This means the magnetic field is anti-clockwise around the wire if the current flows upwards. Now what will happen to the magnetic field if the direction of the current changes? Down, then up, then down, then up. Make a prediction. The magnetic field changes direction each time the current changes direction. If the current is upward, the field is anti-clockwise around the wire. If the current is downward, the field goes clockwise around the wire. Again, you must notice that the magnetic field directions are in the horizontal plane and the current is vertical. That's important to remember. We could set up boards and little magnets at many heights around this wire. Imagine layers of little magnets that show the field around the wire from top to bottom. The field would look like a toilet roll all around the wire. Alright, so we know that a changing electric field causes a changing magnetic field. But does it work the other way around? Does a change in the magnetic field cause a change in an electric field? Let's pass a magnetic field past a wire and see if we can get a current in the wire. We'll coil the wire like this to get more length of wire that passes by the magnetic field. Now we connect this to a galvanometer. This is a very sensitive ammeter and it measures small currents. Here's our bar magnet back again. The magnetic field is strongest at the ends of the magnet and is weaker out here. Now I'm going to move the magnet's north pole into the coil. As the coil feels the magnetic field increasing, it generates a current. When the magnet stops, the galvanometer needle does not move. That means there's no current when the magnet is not moving. When I pull the magnet out, the magnetic field between the wires changes again and the current in the wire moves the other way. So we have found a fundamental principle in physics. When charges move, they cause a magnetic field. And when a magnetic field changes, it causes an electric field. And the two fields are at right angles to each other. That's important. Don't forget it. The next lesson shows how these two fields interact with each other to produce an electromagnetic wave. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also, look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.